Hello, my name is Rob Gautier and I'm the principal of Conrad Weiser High School. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video about scheduling for the high school uh, eighth graders heading into ninth grade. Typically, we do have a meeting to have parents in an auditorium, but the auditoriums have been booked. Um, I scheduled us for our new LGI at the high school, but construction uh, delays have prevented us from having that. So I wanted to make sure that I touch base with you, the parents, to know exactly what's going on at the high school, um, how to schedule, and, and what your students heard um, a portion of this at their eighth grade meeting. So let's begin. At this point, we'd like to schedule a, a typical student. So this is the front page of their, their student Skyward. They would go to the schedule button. And currently, that's their middle school schedule. What we're looking to is request courses. So we would come up here, click request courses. This side gives us all of the courses that are available to the, the uh, ninth graders of next year. Now remember, we are picking eight credits, which credits are going to be counted up here. We're also picking three alternates, just in case they're not able to get their classes. So we needed an English, a math, a science, a social studies. We definitely know that as we reviewed the credits. So uh, let's say for this student, the teacher recommended, now this is on those course planning sheets that the students have gotten, English CP9. Highlight it and we add it. Then we would go to a math. We could highlight the Algebra 1 CP because that might have been what was recommended and we add it. Again, the total credits are being counted. We move down to social studies. Now, this particular student might have gotten a recommendation of an honors, which is slightly ahead of CP. We still add that course. And we continue on. Science. We would say Earth Science CP because that was the recommendation. So we add that class. But then we might realize, you know what, I definitely want to try the, uh, the agricultural track and wanted to take intro to ag. Remember, we had a choice between Earth Science CP or intro to ag. So if you highlight the Earth Science CP, and then you could remove it. We're back to three credits. Now, I will say that the ag is down in the 8,000s, 8,000 to 1 to be exact. I highlight it. And I bring that in. So I've got my English, my math, my science, my social studies. We know we have to take Health 9 and we have to take Intro to Phys Ed. So they're in the 7,000s. So we take the Health 9 and I'm going to do the same thing with Intro to PE. We are now five credits. This particular student, obviously on a college prep track, there's some honors or some college prep. So we always highly recommend a lot of colleges require two years of a world language. So this particular student, let's say they want to take Latin one their freshman year, and then they would follow up with Latin two their sophomore year. Remember again, we also offer Spanish, we also offer German. We are at six. So basically two more to play with in terms of electives. Now, maybe this particular student wants to have a more academic and then maybe um, something else like band and chorus. So World of Shakespeare is one of our academic ninth grade electives. So we're going to add Shakespeare. That's our seventh credit. And then we slide down and do band and chorus, which is right here. Now, remember, there's a band only if they want just band. There's a chorus only if they just want chorus. This particular student decided they want to have both band and chorus. Still only one credit. That gives us our eight credits. So we're, we have our schedule. We like it. But you, can't, you don't necessarily get every course that you, you request. Uh, freshmen typically are the last to get scheduled. So you always need to request three alternates just in case. So let's say we're not sure about the Latin being able to get in, I just want to have a backup, and that would be German 1. And I apologize, I had already done some scheduling here. So the German 1 is already scheduled, 
And I also scheduled some alternates, street law and intro to business. Now, if I wanted intro to business to be my first alternate, I would click the arrow intro to business. So uh, I would know as the principal that if this student's schedule doesn't work, their first choice would be intro to business and I tried to make their schedule work fitting in that intro to business. Street law would be second. If for some reason a world language is full, I would always make sure I put that alternate of a world language in. So this student has their eight credits, they have their three alternates, I go back to request courses, make sure everything's there, and this student is scheduled. So let's go through the different things about the high school. Some differences between middle school and high school. They're all new classes come January. We are semesterized, so students take courses in the, in the fall, and then again in the spring they change to new classes, or actually in mid-January. There are no teams at the high school. You're with different students all day, so from one class to the next, um, you'll be with a, a different group of students. Classes may also be with other grades, uh, especially electives. You may be a ninth grader with a 12th grader in your elective. So they are all mixed together. And lunches also um, are more based on what class you're taking. So most English classes at a particular time would be having lunch. So those would be mixed with all grades. Now again, most classes are every day. There are a few exceptions. Health and PE alternate every other day. Band and chorus uh, go through the entire year and they alternate every other day. And another uh, big difference, major courses are taught at different ability levels at the high school. So graduation requirements. This is not something that you have to have memorized. It's in that program of studies that we gave the students. This is just to give you a general idea of how many credits students need to graduate. All students are going to be required to have four English classes. All students outside of BCTC Career Tech students, and we'll talk about that a little later, need to have four credits of social studies. The students need three science credits and three math credits. And on top of that, those students would also need one more credit. Many of our students, though, do take more than uh, at least four science credits, at least four math credits, and some even go beyond that. That is just a minimum. Phys Ed, they have three credits. It's actually one and a half credits, but it's three classes. So you would take it your ninth grade year, your 10th grade year, and then once your 11th or 12th grade year. And we'll make sure as I go through the scheduling that you'll see that everyone has to take Phys Ed. Also, all uh, eighth going into ninth grade will be taking a health class. They do that in ninth grade, and then they'll also do that in 11th grade. So that's a requirement, and that would give you one credit. If you see at the bottom, there's 27 credits that are needed for graduation. Conrad Weiser students typically take 32 credits, 32 courses when they are at Conrad Weiser. So there is a little buffer if students get off to a bad start or have a bad stretch where they fail a couple classes. They still are not yet in jeopardy of graduating. So classes ninth graders must take. They must take an English. They must take a math. They must take a science. They must take a social studies. They have to have their health and PE. And world language is suggested if a student's planning on going to college. Most colleges require two years of a world language. So we typically have ninth graders start off with a world language if they're applying to college. This is a picture of a course planning sheet. The counselors in the counseling office will have each student's course planning sheet. And by the time they are seniors, there, there are so many arrows and notes and so forth written on this. It's nice and pretty to start, but by the end, this is where they keep their notes of what uh, the students are asked for, how the interests have changed, and making sure that they have taken the appropriate course, courses. Like I showed earlier, you had all those credit requirements. That is not something that you necessarily have to follow. Um, it's good that you do, but the counselor is always the backup in making sure that the students are on track to graduate and taking the correct courses. Each student will meet with the counselor every year. In fact, our counselors will be coming over to the middle school 
to just introduce themselves to the student and take a quick look at their schedule to make sure that everything's good um, heading into next year. Then they'll have individual meetings with the counselors each year as they schedule. So here's a sample schedule um, at the high school. Uh, you have the fall semester, you have the spring semester. So for this student, they have their algebra one, their math in the fall, their English in the fall. Um, both this student had picked college prep classes. You see the health and PE, which is that third requirement. And then they also have their world language, so they took Spanish one. So that's how the schedule falled out um, for them. In the spring, technology systems is one of the uh, electives that they chose. They have their science or their science, which was required, remember, and then they also have their history. Um, their fourth block is intro to business, which would have been another elective. So this particular student took their four majors. They had to ha have their health and PE. They have their world language and they chose technology systems and intro to business as their electives. At the end of the day, we have what's called personalized learning time. Students will be able to go into a website and choose their activity for each day. We always ask for students to try to schedule ahead for that week um, to make sure they are in something, but this will give them time to either have study hall, go to uh, math for tutoring. There's uh, all kinds of different um, activities. Sometimes it's basketball, uh, a teacher hosts Wordle. There's just all kinds of different things that the students can do in that half hour. Student schedules are slightly different if you're in the music program. This is an example of a grade nine chorus student. As you can see, block one, they'll always be when they have chorus or band. Now in the fall, this particular student would have their intro to PE. So it'd be chorus one day, intro to PE um, the other day. Then in the spring, they continue on chorus. So chorus is year round. And in the spring is when they would have their Health 9. So Chorus is one of their electives. Intro to PE, Health 9. They have their World Language of German. And then as you can see, they have their Social Studies, their Math, their English, their Science. And uh, this student chose Digital Photography as their other elective. There are a number of other things that we need for students um, to graduate. One of them is the Act 339 Career Portfolio. Uh, students throughout their middle school, they've already done, and high school are going to have career lessons, um, which they will put into a portfolio, and um, that's a requirement from the state. One thing that is new that has started with this year's junior class is the Act 158 graduation requirements. Every student needs a pathway to graduation. Um, one of those pathways uh, is passing the Keystone test. Another pathway is attending Burke's Community or, or Burke's Technical Center. Um, there are different pathways where you can do a combined score of Keystones. We've met with every junior uh, to find them a pathway. Um, it wasn't that difficult we will work with every student as they get to their junior year to make sure they have the correct pathway for them. Uh, 20 hours of community service is required at graduation. Students will be able to start doing community service this summer um, before their ninth grade year and we will go over that with them in May um, when they come over to the high school building and start talking about community service. And also students with over 100 hours get to wear a special cord at graduation signifying that they did contribute to their community. Keystone exams, all high school students are required to do Keystones. Algebra 1, some students might be taking it um, in May at, at the 8th grade level, the Algebra 1 one. And then uh, at the high school, if you take Algebra 1 CP, you'll be taking it um, literature grade 10, biology grade 10. So at some point during the first three years in high school, all three of these Keystone exams will have been completed. Um, a number of times, if students are not proficient, they would retake the exam, uh, but we would notify the students of that ahead of time. So let's just go through the uh, different levels and the curriculum. 
So this is the English curriculum. We have four different levels. At the ninth grade level, it's three different levels. So we have our regular, we have our college prep, and we have our honors. As you go further, uh, junior and senior year, there are AP classes. There are also electives uh, in the English curriculum. Um, the one that's available for ninth graders this year is the world of William Shakespeare. Now every year a student has to take an English class, but an elective does not count as an English class. Mathematics, there's two different pathways, two different sequences. One that is a college prep sequence on the left, one that is an applied sequence that is on the right. Uh, your eighth grade teacher will have scheduled your student for the appropriate math for them. Now that doesn't mean once a student's in applied sequence can't get into an academic sequence. They just need to prove that they're able to complete the work at a very high level and show the work ethic um, to get that recommendation into an academic sequence down the road. But as you can see, uh, a number of different offerings as they go through. Remember they need at least three maths um, and three sciences and a fourth, so they may be taking four math eventually. Now some of these are uh, eventually can be led to what's called dual enrollment college credits, and I'll talk about that more later. We also have a computer science program. To start in computer science, a student would either need Algebra one at the eighth grade level or get to the high school and take Algebra one CP. There is a, a lot of math in the computer science programs. So uh, if they are interested in the computer science, they need to get that math level up. But a ninth grader can start with computer science one if they had the algebra one at the eighth grade level. And of course, we have a number of classes and they could take computer science throughout their four years as an elective. Social studies, we have a number of electives. Um, again, the four levels, just like the English curriculum. Uh, AP doesn't start until their sophomore year. Um, Again, the eighth grade teacher would recommend which level, whether it's honors, college, prep, or regular. So grade nine, they will be taking the U.S. History One. That is the only option for a required class. Now, it could be honors, U.S. One. It could be college prep, U.S. One, or it could be just the regular U.S. History One. We also have electives that they could choose from. Uh, street law is a highly popular um, ninth grade elective. And the world of Conrad Weiser is also uh, an elective offered at the high school. Science, again, we have our different levels. We have AP, we have honors, we have college prep, and we have regular. What the grade nine students need to worry about is their choice of either earth science or intro to ag science. Again, the earth science is in the 4,000s. Intro to ag science will be in the 8,000s, and I'll show that to you uh, when we schedule a little later. So that's their choice. Now there's only one level of ag science. Okay, so uh, a variety of students' ability levels are, have that, are able to take ag science. Everyone's taking the same class and, and they'll work with the different students' levels. Um, earth science, there's an honors earth science, a college prep earth science, and the regular earth science. Now a lot of ninth graders um, ask if they could double up meaning could they take earth science and biology in the ninth grade year. You can schedule it. Sometimes it's because we have some biology in the fall and some biology in the spring. If the biologies in the spring get full or they, the earth science gets full and it moves the student to the spring, they may not be able to double up this year but would be able to double up their sophomore year. So if they're interested in doing that, they could go ahead and schedule it but it may kick it out and then we would have to go to an alternate. So they would go earth science, biology is a requirement, and then there's a couple different choices. There's chemistry and astronomy in grade 11. Uh, there's physics in grade 12, also, also astronomy. The ag sciences. So intro to ag would count as a science towards graduation if you want to do that the ninth grade year. There is a 10th grade science called Current Topics in Ag Science, which the students could take, but they would also still need to take the biology. Um, there's also a number of other uh, science classes through the agricultural program, AP Environmental Science, and you can see there's biotechnology, microbiology, there's a lot to choose from. 
I highlighted in orange throughout this uh, sciences that are electives that ninth graders could take. There's the innovative science research. A number of students do that SRI science program in the summer and may want to continue from this summer into next year working on their science research. So that's an opportunity for ninth graders as an elective. Anatomy and Physiology 1 is actually another one um, I didn't highlight, but that is also available to ninth graders. Um, and Forensic Science is also available to ninth graders. Now, there's always a number of these classes that are extremely popular, so you may schedule it and you may not be able to get it. For example, Forensic Science is a very popular class and fills up. So if they don't get it their ninth grade year, they'd be able to get it their 10th grade year. World language, we offer three different, German, Spanish, and Latin, and a reminder that many colleges require two years of it. Um, if your students are uh, very science-oriented, um, I'd highly suggest Latin um, for obvious reasons, uh, but German and Spanish, both outstanding uh, languages, uh, great teachers, um, very good program world language here. Business education, there's a number of electives for them to take. Um, intro to Business uh, for ninth graders and Microsoft Applications 1 is also available for ninth graders. A number of students who are interested at the high school in business have all kinds of different options as they go through their four years, leading into a career internship, which a student could take their junior and senior year, um, or just their senior year, or just their junior year. Not a requirement, but we have over 50 students who will be going out next year um, and uh, shadowing or working at different businesses in our community and getting high school credit for it. Binder PE and health, the students have to take, so they'll be taking their PE 9, their health 9, and uh, their sophomore year they will have PE 10 with driver education, and then in the 11th or 12th 12th grade years, they'll be taking health and one more PE to fulfill those requirements. We also have electives uh, as they get through. So 10th grade year, they'd be able to take exercise physiology, um, which is a number of athletes do uh, to stay in shape for the sports seasons or to get stronger. And there's also group fitness for students who like to, to exercise early in the morning to start their day. A uh, number of art offerings for ninth graders. There's two different ones, Foundations of Art, and there's also Art Across Cultures. If, they, if your student really loves art, they would be able to take both of those um, in their ninth grade year as well. And then eventually they could move on to the different advanced classes that we have at the high school. Digital photography is also an option. I'm sorry I didn't highlight that, but uh, down below there's three levels of digital photography. Uh, digital Photography 1 is another one of those popular classes that sometimes gets filled. So that's why we're going to require alternates for all students who schedule. Number of music offerings. Again, I talked about you could take just chorus, you could take just band, or you could combine the two um, and have band and chorus. Uh, and they are all different one credit. There's also music through the guitar keyboard if, you're, if your students vary. Um, interested in music and especially potentially moving into um, a, uh, a major in college of music, they definitely need to um, take that music through the guitar and keyboard. There's also a new elective called From Bach to Rock. It's the history of music, so that'll be offered to ninth graders as well. And as students go through the music program, they, they have these other options to take. Um, and they can also stay with a chorus, band and chorus and so forth, all four years of Conrad Weiser. Uh, technology education program, grade nine, and a number of different options. There's tech systems, um, drawing design and innovation, aviation and aerospace, and visual communications. Your student will also has already received a program of studies, which is a yellow calendar looking booklet. Inside of it, it has all the information for each one of these classes if you're not sure um, or you want the description of the classes. And I'll also show as they're in scheduling how they could see those descriptions as well. And then as they go through these classes, for example, the design, drawing design and innovation has a second level as they get old or older in the high school 
and that would be architectural design. So they could continue on um, with these different tech education courses. Family consumer science, we just built with our construction a new uh, kitchen that, that holds 24 students. So we have ability to take some ninth grade students into culinary one, extremely popular class, another one that might be iffy if a student gets scheduled, but they would definitely be able to get it at least their 10th grade year. And a number of students move from culinary one to culinary two. I can honestly say it was probably one of the most effective classes that my son took at high school. Um, and it really changed his life on how he approached how he ate and took care of himself. There's also uh, independent living. There's a ninth, 10th grade level, and eventually there's an 11th, 12th grade level. Uh, parenting and child development um, is available to take, as well as fashion and textile design. Now again, fashion and textile is one of those classes that's very popular. So if they don't get it their ninth grade year, they'd be able to get it their 10th grade year. And clothing construction is the second level of that fashion and textile design class. Um, we have a, a television studio, new television classroom getting put in. Um, students will be able to take digital video and film one. I have highlighted there. Um, actually, you could go through five levels of the digital video and film class. So if there's an absolute passion um, for this kind of work, then um, I highly recommend it. And there's also a broadcast journalism class as well that they'd be, be able to take as they move on. I touched on dual enrollment a little earlier. Dual enrollment is when students can get college credit for taking classes at Conrad Weiser. Um, so right now we are working exclusively with Reading Area Community College. We did have an agreement with University of the Sciences that's been put on hold. But uh, what happens is if you take a dual enrollment class, they would have the ability to get those three college credits through RAC if, um, if they pay. It's something they don't make the decision before they take the class. That actually happens during the class. Right now the rate is $99, so for approximately $300 um, you would get three college credits. That doesn't mean the student would have to go to RAC after they completed high school. Those, those uh, classes transfer to many colleges across the state and country. You would just need to find out um, from your student which, which colleges they are looking at, and then you could find out if those RAC credits would, would count. So currently we have a Calculus Honors, Accounting too. Um, next year there is one available for ninth graders if, if they could get in, and that's the Anatomy and Phys 1. Um, anatomy, anatomy and Phys 2 is also um, a dual enrollment class. So if they don't get this their ninth grade year, they'd be able to get both of those their 10th, 11th, or 12th grade year. So you don't have to feel like um, because that's a dual enrollment class, you have to get it your ninth grade year. AP World History is another offering. AP English Literature for their senior year as they move up in the mass college algebra. Um, AP Physics senior year, and there's also a dual enrollment biology class. We're constantly looking to update. We're hoping to have more math classes offered next year in the dual enrollment field. We, BCTC is also one of the, the outstanding uh, career tech centers. I'd put them up against any uh, career tech center in the entire state. Um, all kinds of offerings. Typically starts grade 10. Um, they do look at attendance, they look at grades, they look at discipline. So if there is an interest in, in being a part of the uh, BCTC and Career Tech Center, Center, they do an amazing job. And this isn't just for um, students who are looking to get into automotive or, or um, there's um, all kinds of offerings. And I want you to take a look at the, your booklet. Your program of studies, page 67 to 71, there's a list in there, and it talks about BCTC. So the students would take a tour in ninth grade, and then they would uh, hear a presentation and they decide whether they'd like to apply. If they apply to career tech, that doesn't mean they have to go. They could decide later that they decided not to go, and then they would get scheduled for the high school. Um, but again, I, I highly recommend um, if your student is a hands-on person, um, and there's all kinds of different levels at the Career Tech Center, and they also have programs where college credit is available as well. Course descriptions, again, they are in your program of studies. 
Um, one thing I want you to take a look at is underneath, if you see that 2013 where it says Geometry College Prep, one of the things that students, as they look to schedule, they may run into what's called a prerequisite. So if your student didn't take Algebra 1 at the grade 8 level, they're not going to be able to take Geometry College Prep until they have taken Algebra 1. So at our high school, that would be Algebra 1 CP. Um, so that, that's the same for all kinds of classes. I just want you to kind of recognize that as they go through the years that they may need to take a previous class to take a, a certain class that they are interested in. So our scheduling process. This week, um, the students are going to select their courses and get signatures from their teachers. So they're going to take the sheet of paper that they received today. They're going to go around to the teachers. The teachers are going to recommend those major courses and then they are going to schedule them in Skyward. And I'll be showing you in a little bit how to do that scheduling. Um, everything must be registered by this Sunday. That portal is going to be closed after Sunday. At that point, Mrs. Pearsall is going to take a look at the schedules and then our high school counselors are going to come over and look at the schedules as well. And we just want to make sure that everyone's on the right path. We will not, um, we always check to see if there's open blocks or so if a student's missing a, a certain number of classes, we make sure we get that filled in. Students who um, are work have specially designed instruction through their IEPs, um, that's also taken into account for and uh, their case managers will work closely with them to make sure they are properly scheduled. So again, Mrs. Pearsall reviews the schedules, our high school counselors come over, at the end of July, you'll get that announcement that your student schedules are available online. The parent or guardian is the ones that are going to have to go on first, fill out the required paperwork so that we have emergency contact for up-to-date information, and then the students will be able to see their schedule. At that point, the schedules can be adjusted if, if there's a request. So if there's an unbalanced schedule, for instance, if you notice uh, semester one, there's the science, math, social studies, English, all in one semester, and all the electives in another semester. That's an unbalanced schedule. In a perfect world, we'd like to have two majors in each semester, but that's not always possible. But we can always make sure that they shouldn't have four in one semester. So we would look to move, if you notify us, we would, like, we would look to move um, obviously one of those majors into semester two or two if possible to balance that schedule. Students will be receiving their new computers. Um, at the end of this year they'll be uh, handing in their eighth grade computer and at either some point in the summer or to start the school year we will be having um, getting out those new computers and a reminder it's very important to get that computer insurance um, a small price to pay um, for something that could potentially happen where there could be a lot of damage. Grade 9 orientation in May, we bring over the students. Um, they will get information, they'll meet their counselors, they'll meet the administrators. We just talk about some life in the high school. Then they'll take tours with our current 9th and 10th grade students, um, stu probably students that they already know, um, comfortable with, and they'll give them tours around the building just to introduce them to the high school. We'll give them more information about activities, and that's when we'll start talking about community service information. In August, we invite the parents in with the students. Our tentative date right now is Tuesday, August 16th at 7 o'clock. We give you about a half hour overview about things in the high school, what to expect the first day, like you know what it looks like in the cafeteria, uh, getting off the bus, what doors they walk in. Then we give the time for you and the students to tour individually. They'll have their schedule in hand and they'll be able to find their different classrooms, find the nurse's office, find the high school office and so forth. More information will be coming about this. We'll do multiple Skylert announcements to make sure you're aware about this orientation. If you have any questions about any of this, feel free either to email Mrs. Pearsall at the high school. That's her address. Feel free to email me. I'm on email a lot and um, I could quickly get you an answer for any questions that you might have. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Feel free to email if you have any questions. We look forward to seeing all of you in August 
uh, with our ninth grade orientation. Thanks.